Okay, we're going to talk about some malignant disorders that involve the respiratory structures. Um, the first one we're going to talk about, and really the primary one you need to know, is lung cancer. It's the most common cancer among cigarette smokers and secondhand smokers as well. Um, and I know that you know there's probably a lot of commercials out and education material that is out there that talks about how secondhand smoke is as dangerous as um, firsthand smoking is, and that is accurate. And so if you are a smoker and you smoke around your children, then they you're putting them at risk for developing lung cancer someday just from being around um, their secondhand smoke. Very scary, very serious, very important to stop smoking if you are. Um, and to teach our patients to do so as well. It's more common in men than it is in women. However, women do get lung cancer from smoking as well. It usually occurs um, in patients who are older than 40 years old, um, especially if they've been smoking um, for many, many years at that point. However, if you smoke a pack a day for five years, then that increases your chances of developing lung cancer at a younger age as well. Um, it is the number one cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States, and more die from it than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colorectal cancer combined, which is a lot of people who die from lung cancer. Um, the incidence has increased since the 1980s just because of the increased accuracy with diagnosis, primarily, um, because they used to not be able to tell if, they, if a patient had lung cancer um, before. So, um, and also because of the growing population of aging people. So people who um, are living longer and smoking for more years are developing lung cancer in those later years as well. And also just a continued popularity in smoking. For some reason, people continue to associate smoking with being cool, and it's not. But um, nonetheless, people do, and so they continue smoking, even though they know it's not good for them. Um, and also the increased exposure to industrial pollutants, which that has nothing to do with smoking. It has to do with, you know, all of the things that get released into our air. So the exhaust from our cars or from factories or um, a lot of different things. We get a lot of pollutants in our air and that can eventually lead to um, lung cancer as well. So the good news is that smokers who quit can reduce their risk um, of developing lung cancer to that of a non-smoker within 10 to 15 years. That means if you stop smoking today in 10 years, it, your lungs think you basically have never smoked because they repair and repair and repair and build themselves back up and you're no longer um, someone who's at an increased risk and that is phenomenal. Um, there's two overall categories of lung cancer and you can look at those more in depth in your book but it's non-small cell and small cell. Small cell is also known as oat cell carcinoma um, and non-small cell, sometimes you'll hear it called large cell lung cancer. It is a large cell or the non-small cell is a more slow growing type of cancer in the lungs um, and you just need to know that really. Um, and then the small cell or the oat cell is the most malignant um, form of cancer. It spreads rapidly, grows rapidly, and it is the leading cause of death from lung cancer as well. It typically has pretty early metastasis as well, which means it's spreading to other lung tissue, your lymph tissue, and other organs in the body as well. It, it moves fast. Um, it is a very aggressive form of cancer. Um, and it usually starts out in your bronchi and just rises up and then spreads out. Um, the signs and symptoms of lung cancer just vary depending on the size of the tumor, the location, the stage, and presence of metastasis. Um, also just the type of cancer, if it's non-small cell versus small cell. Um, but what you'll probably end up seeing is some mucopurulent or blood streaked sputum. Um, it's very thick, it's very nasty looking, uh, and it's copious. Okay, And that is a cardinal sign of lung cancer for us. And that picture down there shows us healthy lungs versus smoking lungs. And that is terrifying to me to even see those pictures. But the signs and symptoms just during the progression usually are not going to um, associate these with cancer in the early stages and it's going to take a while for us to really understand that the patient does have a malignant disease instead of just some kind of common respiratory infection. So the first things you see are them feeling pretty fatigued, um, having a persistent cough, um, maybe losing some weight and not really feeling like eating. But that persistent cough is what starts to signal to us, hmm, is there something going on, maybe more than just bronchitis or something in the body? Later signs and symptoms is when they become short of breath, have chest pain, decreased breath sounds wherever the um, disease is located. Um, and then if they have metastasis, they're going to start complaining of head and neck pain, pericardial effusion, hoarseness, vocal cord changes. That's when it's gotten to the point where it's already spread throughout the body and it's very difficult to treat. Um, early diagnosis is key, but it's difficult. So if we can um, get the patient in with those first signs and symptoms of the you know, um, persistent cough and decreased appetite, the better we can be. However, a lot of times doctors even um, 
don't immediately go to malignant disease when you have those signs and symptoms because they're pretty vague, you know. So by the time a definitive diagnosis is really reached, um, the disease is pretty established, and that's why it's the leading cause of cancer deaths. Um, it's because by the time we really notice it, they're already having that head and neck pain from the metastasis. Um, they're already having the blood streak sputum and things like that. Um, but we do want to get a sputum pathology just to see what's going on in that sputum, see if it's an infection or if there is malignant disease. Um, a chest x-ray, CT scan, MRI, PET scan, bronchoscopy, all of those things are going to visualize the lungs for us and show us that you know, there's some kind of abnormality um, or tumor growth within the structures. But our definitive diagnosis needs to be reached through a biopsy. And usually they'll obtain that with um, the bronchoscopy. They'll go in and take a portion of the tissue, send it off to pathology, and it'll come back as malignant disease. To treat it, like we said, our prognosis is pretty poor. And I hate um, even talking about that because it's true. Um, a lot of times, lung cancer is not, um, it doesn't have a, a good prognosis. People die pretty quickly um, unless the tumor is discovered early. And we've already talked about how rare and how hard it is um, to get an early diagnosis. So it really all just depends on the stage, the tumor size, presence of metastasis, the patient's age, um, their physical condition, and if they had any pre-existing conditions by the time they were diagnosed with lung cancer also. Um, radiation can slow down the progression of the disease, but it's not really curative. Um, it can also re relieve some of the symptoms of like shortness of breath and um, activity intolerance and things like that, but um, usually it's just palliative. We can do some surgical resection or removal of the tumor. And that's our only possibility for a cure. But it is pretty hard to find clear margins, which means, you know, directly around the tumor, it's hard to know if there's any stray cancer cells or whatever. But um, again, that surgery is only effective in the early stages as well. Once it gets to the later stages and it's already metastasized, it's too extensive to actually remove surgically. Um, Chemo can be used adjunctively with radiation, and that also is very helpful in knocking back um, the tumor growth and hopefully um, giving the patient several more years. But again, um, it's really hard to find a cure unless we're able to get clear margins around the tumor, which the chemo can be useful in shrinking it down enough so that we can do surgery, but it's tough. Here's some questions, review them, pause the video and see if you can answer them. Okay, here's the answers. See if you got those right. If you didn't, then make sure you go back and review and see why. And we will be back soon and talk about something else.